And with this, we're training um, international people. For the last two years, we've been bringing um, conservation scientists from throughout the Cheetah Range countries in, teaching them about our conservation programs, our, um, our, our science, so that all of them in Cheetah Range countries can be trained together. We're developing um, uh, large groups in, in the different countries and helping so that um, the cheetah may have a chance. We're teaching our farmers training courses so that the, throughout Africa we are giving the same and similar messages. We've been able to put over 400 conservation scientists now through our training programs. These are month-long training programs from about 25 countries. And at the same time we're training a lot of Namibians as well. And Many of our Namibian students are now in PhD and master's programs. On another level, looking at beef and the, um, the problems that farming causes, that if we could actually get the world to understand that beef farming is a problem for many aspects of biodiversity and actually destroying many of our predators in the world, I thought that maybe we could come up with an eco-label. So I developed a label called Cheetah Country Beef, and I'm working with our Conservancy Association of Namibia and our meat board, and we do sell our beef to Europe, and we're trying to put a price premium on it for farmers who are no longer killing predators, who have developed good um, um, conservation farming practices, and by putting a price premium on them, consumers in the world can actually help support good farming methods. This program, we think, is becoming a model for other cat conservation and carnivore conservation um, around the world. And I think it's not going to be called cheetah country. It'll be called probably predator friendly. Or we've developed another overarching um, uh, label, which is called wildlife friendly. And with this, the certification, we believe, still is going to be very important. So I really ask all of you to consider and think about how certification and uh, putting price premiums into the back into the hands who are practicing good conservation can be most useful. Conservancies are also an important future for the cheetah. Conservancies are also a model in Namibia where they are um, large interconnected lands that supported integrated livestock and wildlife management. And with this then predators can be within a system and it meets the needs of the people as well as the um, saving animals like cheetahs and other large carnivores. We're a member of the Waterbird Conservancy and conservancies now have taken um, over much of Namibia. About 40% of our country's landscape is now in conservation. From the development of our conservancies in the middle here over to the brown areas, which are commun communal conservancies, we've actually grown the area for cheetah all across the country and now are going into the southern part of the country. So um, conservancies are an important part, and we think that people around the world are starting to look at this. We are also having people from um, the United States and the, the um, central areas coming in to learn about reestablishing the grasslands and the prairies here in North America from the work in Namibia. We are based at the area called the Waterberg Plateau, which is a national park, which is based right in here. And from here, working with our communities, which are the Herero speaking, and many of our conservancies here, and this is our Waterberg Conservancy, we're now working with an area of about 2 million acres of land, all in here, and some of the most important areas for the cheetah, the wild dog, which is Africa's uh, most endangered animal, as well as rhinos. And we do see a big future, a future that these um, these greater complex areas can be very important. We can interlink large landscapes together. And these large landscapes are going to be very important for animals like cheetahs, wild dogs, elephants, and all the rest of the wildlife. So although we acknowledge that although there's um, areas where coexistence can be possible with large predators, we're actually looking at cheetah conservation and looking at um, the amount of land that's going to be required in order to actually save the species. And the kind of planning we're looking at has really never been looked at a scale that cheetah conservation is looking at, changing the face of Africa. So um, I didn't know that I was going to be walking the walk for the cheetah, but um, the walk that I'm walking is trying to actually change the face of Africa and having a place on Earth for this most incredible species. We're looking at reintroductions in Zambia. We've taken over the southern part of Namibia now. We're even looking at areas into India and even into areas of, of um, into the, the east and in Russia. So the cheetah may have a chance again. And 
and we're very pleased that it does, but putting the, into practice these processes that I've just talked about with integrating people are the key part to it. Healthy ecos, ecosystems actually do provide economic incentives. We need to make those economic incentives and actually show that conservation has to be creative and we have to make the future for all of these different animals. We're making a difference. We've stopped the killing ecologically. We've de helped communities derive benefits from the cheetahs. We are now trying to work to pay for these good farming practices and get our program and our models throughout all of Africa. And for the cheetah to survive, we need to actually work with the people on whose land the cheetah is living and change the face of Africa for the future. So I thank you, and we do have a website, cheetah.org. We are a nonprofit foundation, and all the work that you've seen here has been supported really just through a handful of, of people in the world who think the cheetah is very special. And I thank those people. I thank my parents for being here, our board members, my partner, Bruce Brewer, and we've got a lot more to do. And thank you for giving me the honor to be a Tyler Prize um, laureate.